Bureau Boys is an improvised detective serial. Every Monday morning, the Bureau Boys solve crimes based on clues sent in by their informants. That's you! Go to thebureauboys.com to submit your clues, informant. Thanks to informant Anthony for this week's clue for the case of the batty billionaire on cloud nine. When we last left the Bureau boys, they had left the office of the Bureau to Hill Valley Hill. And atop Hill Valley Hill, there sits the Albright Estate slash Mansion. Its opulence is one to behold from afar. Its bejeweled castle towers are the envy of every citizen in Hill Valley. Oh, to live there, to be there. It's not unlike the height of the Roman Empire, is it not, narrator? It is not. Well, why not, narrator? It has Roman columns. It has Roman statues. Used to have a bunch of geese roaming around the front yard. Yes, all building blocks of a Roman empire, to be sure, but it's missing a key component. Stabbing? A senate? Gladiators fighting? Lions to the death. That's the one. That's what I was thinking. Slaves fighting to the death. (laughs) That's the only thing. Well, narrator, let me direct your attention to the southeast corner of the campus, where there is indeed a small arena filled with tigers fighting what appear to be paupers to the death. That must be why there are no homeless on the streets of Hill Valley. Please, narrator. Unhomed, I believe is the appropriate word. Thank you. I'm not the most politically correct narrator in this business. Anyhow, narrator, the Bureau Boys roll up to the front gate of the Albright Estate, where they are stopped at a guard booth. Well, what can I do for you, fancy fellows? Hello. Hello. You must be Carl. That is my Christian name. What's your pagan name? Moon Center. Oh, nice to meet you, Carl. Slash Moon Center. I'm Detective Potter slash Reed Weaver. Nice. Nice one, Detective Potter. That's actually my pagan name. Oh, shoot. Uh, And I'm Detective Riley. Uh, Pagan name. Idol Worshipper. What? I, I wish I had said Idol Worshipper. Okay, okay, I'll see. Uh, uh, my pagan name is uh, uh, d- uh, Worshipper of Idols. D- did I say that right? It's close enough. All right. Well, I don't suppose you came out here just to exchange niceties. What can I do for you fellow pagans? Detective Potter flashes the mark of the beast. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, we're here to actually... We're detectives, investigators, mm. private investigators... It's a good thing to know that those of us keeping the faith, hint, hint, have risen to stations of prominence within law enforcement. Very, it pleases me. As Carl says, hint, hint, he extends his hand, almost like a handshake, but clearly initiating a secret handshake. His hand is limp. Like a dead fish, just waiting for a stiffer hand to to grasp it and initiate the pagan hand ritual. Narrator, in keeping with the goings-on right now, I would say his hand is limp like a recently slaughtered calf. No? Detective Potter and Detective Riley both extend their hands at exactly the same time. They interlace their fingers with Carl's long fingers. Then they all look at one another with a crooked smile and perform a little dance with their fingers interlocked. Much like a dance around a burning effigy, or 
in keeping with the goings on the smoldering corpse of a virgin. I feel like a burning effigy was in keeping with the goings on of what's happening right now, but I appreciate the extra illusion, narrator. Can I just say, Detective Riley and Detective Potter are kinda crushing this finger dance, making me think that maybe they actually are pagans. I was kind of surprised that Detective Riley didn't immediately have a pagan name. I figured that was his thing. I was disappointed in Detective Potter's pagan name, so it must be real. <sighs> Whoa! That was tiring. I've been skipping Fingers Day. That was exhilarating. Moon Center, thank you for the dance. Well, it's my pleasure. I haven't danced with a man's fingers in many moons. It feels good. Moon Center, Detective Potter points to the thousands of goose corpses just on the other side of the gate. Can you tell us anything about those? Well, those white devils in the lawn? Detective Riley. Carl seems to have bought into what Peter Albright was saying about the geese. He hates geese, too. Right. He's definitely drank the Kool-Aid on that one. But why? Well, why are the geese so hated? Let's ask him. Um, Carl, what are you saying about the white devils? Why do you hate geese so much? Well, you don't know? No, that's why I asked. That's kind of what an investigator does. Asks about things he doesn't know. If I asked about things I knew... I'd just be a talk show host. Well, start a podcast, why don't you? Those white devils have been shitting on our livelihoods for generations. And it's high time they meet their fate. Carl, when you say our property, are you talking about the Albright's property or are you just talking about geese in general? Do you own the Albright estate? Of course I don't. I'm just employed by the great and mighty Peter Albright. The way you were saying it, I thought you were going to say Peter Oz. The great and mighty Peter Albright has sworn death to geese, for they are the enemy of... Airplanes. The outdoor... Enemy of the outdoors. I think we established that already, Carl, as air conditioning. Yes, oh, air conditioning's got it coming next. But first, the geese. But not only, not only the great outdoors, not only to our, or his mere business, but there's something else about the geese. They are uncontrollable. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Carl. I think I'm seeing where you're going with this. Peter Albright built part of his fortune on the seat of, no pun intended, the pants that became picnic pants. Mm -hmm. And if geese are shitting everywhere and you Mm. take those pants off, lay them, which by the way, Detective Riley, I guess I never really thought that they would, you'd take the pants off to actually have the picnic so you'd be pantless during the picnic. But anyhow, when you take the pants off, lay them down as a picnic basket. If you're laying it in goose shit, when you go to put those pants back on, suddenly you've got legs filled with goose. They're covered sh- in shit. Damn, I get it, Detective Riley. I get why Peter Albright hates geese. Now, boys, we have been recruiting new pirates. <laughs> Just recruits to our geese hunting legions. Will you join the call and take up arms against our mighty white foe? Detective Riley, he said legions just like the Romans had. Yeah, you're right. That is, there are some weird similarities, but, but they don't even have gladiator fighting, so there's probably not even related. Detective Riley turns to his left and notices gladiators training in a ring of combat. Oh my god, I take it back. I was just convinced. Carl, listen, we're not here about the wild beast fighting and the gladiators and what seems to be some sort of indentured servitude situation that you have going on here. We're just here to do a wellness check on Peter Albright, senior and junior. 
A wellness check on the PETA boys? That seems highly unnecessary there. First of all, Peter Albright is in the best shape of his life ever since he started hunting and murdering geese with his bare hands. And, uh, young Peter, well, he's just a scamp that's out there doing the devil's work, so he's a good kid. Now, Carl, are you saying that Peter Albright is just in good shape? Are you sure that you're seeing Peter Albright? Are you seeing maybe a guy with makeup, maybe clown makeup, or maybe like a like a sort of like, almost like a luchador's mask that talks like this? Yeah, 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 and he and like maybe uh you know wearing uh, uh strange little bells on on uh, on uh, little curly toed uh, shoes, and and only half his face is painted, uh, and he carries a big gun. Yeah, maybe does sexy things with a bullwhip every once in a while, you know, um, maybe. Mm. Go on. Mm. Uh, uh, just, just I was just grunting in in uh, affirmation that I was listening. Oh, okay. Do you want me to keep going? No, I think that's enough. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the Peter you're describing, well, let's say Peter Albright likes to do a little role-playing every now and again. I hardly think that's cause for concern. Okay, so you have seen Peter Albright dressed as, I mean, I'm just going to say it, all the Batman villains at once? Detective Riley, that's a fair way to say it, right? No, yeah, all of them at once. That's that's You nailed it. Ah, uh, okay, that's a fair description of what's going on, but it's really only between the hours of 1 a.m. to 11 p.m. I hardly, hardly think this is cause for concern. There's at least a, a solid two-hour window where he's completely normal. Carl, can I change gears for a second and ask you a different question, uh, other than that question that I just asked? Yes, uh, yes. Do you know where Peter Albright was last week on his quote-unquote business trip? Well, of course, he was at the most important conference of the year with many great business people uh, from around the world. The Hunter's Club. The Hunter's Club? You mean the Hunter's Club that just five years ago was embroiled in a controversy because they were hunting humans for sports in the Las Vegas deserts? That Hunter's Club? Just then, Carl Moonface grabs Detective Potter. Was it Moonface? I think it was Moon Center. You're right. You're right, narrator. I'm getting. I'm getting all twisted. He has kind of a moon face, though. He's a little. There's a lot of pie lot face. craters. Yeah. <laughs> you mean a pizza face? The acne scars. Yeah, that's right, narrator. Uh huh. Probably didn't have many girlfriends growing up, if you know what I mean. I do, and I sympathize. Well, when you're young, you gotta you gotta stick your nose to the grindstone if you want to be a great narrator. Anyway, enough about our personal lives. Carl Moon Center grabs Detective Riley with one arm and Detective Potter with the other arm. Pulling them both with mighty strength because uh, Carl is actually a pretty buff man behind his well-mannered suit. He smashes the Bureau Boys together and tosses them onto the ground. The Bureau Boys, flat on their backs, look up into the beautiful afternoon sky and the clouds above. Oh, oh my uh, God. My collarbone. That's my favorite bone. Oh, my clavicle. Your second favorite bone. Are those the same thing? Okay, Detective Riley, you don't need to show off that you know that it's called a clavicle. I was trying to dumb it down for you, but okay. There's a few scientific terms I know. Uh, Carl walks right over their bodies, blocking out the sun above them, looking down. Now hear ye. Oh, he's got a proclamation, Detective Riley. Hear ye, hear ye this. The Hunter Club has never engaged in any manslaughtering activities, and we were completely acquitted, and no one shall speak of this issue ever again. Do you got it? Detective Riley, it sounds like he's reading directly from our court transcripts. Yes, yes, we get it, Carl. Hey, yeah, we got it. Oh, fair, fine. Detective Potter peers over Carl's shoulder. And elbows Detective Riley pointing up at the clouds. Detective Riley? 
are you noticing that the clouds are forming into a series of numbers or am I concussed? Oh my god. I see them too. I'm going to say them out loud so we I can remember them and we'll we will put these numbers to use. I'm afraid though if I say them and they have any significance and Carl understands them, we could be in deep shit. Or maybe it if you say them out loud, Carl will be like, why are you saying the numbers to the combination lock in the park behind the gladiator arena or something like that? Wow. D- did you just have a premonition or something, Detective Potter? It's like my thing. No, of course not, Detective Riley. That's nonsense. Okay. I was just thinking that maybe, first of all, I would like to say your audiographic memory has come in super handy so far in this case. And here, here we go one more time. Nine, seven, four, three, eight, six. Oh, excuse me. You gotta keep it down. Those are the. That's the combination to the safety lock behind the gladiator room that holds the business dealings of Peter Albright. Bingo, Detective Riley. We. Did it? I can't believe you got to you, you were right. Maybe I am sort of getting premonitions. Detective Potter and Detective Riley both jump up from the ground and karate chop Carl on both sides of his neck at the same time. Carl slumps to the ground. Probably alive, but the Bureau boys don't take pulses. Okay, that was close, Detective Potter. Now, this is a big gate. Some would say a pearly gate, and it's not going to be easy to scale. Some would say it's almost like Hadrian's Wall. Wait a minute. There is a box over there. We could just press that button to open the door, and then it's a matter of getting to that gladiator pit or beyond it. Agreed, Detective Riley. So, Detective Potter and Detective Riley, reach into the guard tower, push the button, opening the gate. They sneak past the tiger pit. They sneak past the gladiator's arena, back to the combination lock that leads to all Peter Albright's business dealings. Detective Riley, did you remember the combination? Here we go. Detective Riley does remember the combination because he has an audiographic memory. He plugs it into the combination lock. The lock springs open. As the lock springs open... The boys peer inside. Little do they know that they've been tracked by surveillance cameras all the way to this point. And an alarm starts to sound. What will the Bureau boys find inside? The safe. What is at the other end of the alarm that just sounded? Will Carl ever recover from his double karate chop? Does Detective Potter kind of have a little bit of psychic powers now? Find out the answers to these questions and many more next week on The Case of the Batty Billionaire. If you enjoyed this episode, help the Bureau Boys solve this case by submitting your clue at thebureauboys.com. They may use it on a future episode. While you're there, why not join their informant network and tell all your friends and family to join too? But don't tell the criminals, because the Bureau Boys are coming for them. (laughs) 